Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the European Masters. We've dived into this second game. Already in Champion Select, LDLC on the blue side, BTXL elected to take red side. This will shift draft priorities as XL were previously blue, but it will not change the first ban thresh coming out from LDLC. Yeah, and now we see whether my prayers will be answered. Is this going to be the Graves Trundle ban on the side of XL? The set ban is no real surprise here. Uh, yeah, Sendo can play it, even though last game it wasn't, you know, particularly effective. It's, you know, he you know, that was just a bit of an awkward game. But for Bando, he absolutely loves set as a champion. You don't want to give Bando set, so taking that one away, no surprise there when you're playing on red side. Orn are going to be followed up. I think actually Orn has been, uh, it has been Sendo's most played champion by a significant margin. Um, he has four games of Orn over the European Masters and probably as a result has been one of his best performing champions. So they're going to take that off the, the blue side there. No surprises to see the Graves. Will they follow up with a Trundle ban? It feels nigh on necessary uh, when you're dealing with Tinks here. And again, it is a really solid first pick blue side and has been throughout this tournament. So it just seems like a good sensible ban to take off the cards. Plus Taxa is a, is a very good Gragas player and... I think that I just I just honestly don't think that any of the junglers that you have in the meta right now are good answers to Trundle. I just I just don't think that you can stand on your two legs. Oh gosh, all right, there's the Zoe pick. Let's see what uh, LDLC decide to do. It could be the Trundle again. <clears throat> that does limit tanky options in the jungle. It allows Tinks yeah. to be super aggressive. He can play a similar game style, a similar game pattern to the one we've seen him do previously. Uh, it is, in fact, well, I'm not going to speak too quickly because obviously it hasn't been locked in just yet. I got baited by the fact that it was an immediate LeBlanc hover, but uh, it will be the LeBlanc lock-in. So immediate LeBlanc lock-in. They have shown their cards in the mid lane. They are comfortable to do so. And they say, special, your move. Yeah, and then we're going to be following up with the Varus. And please, thank goodness for that. They've taken away the Trundle from Tinks. Now, obviously, there's a reason why I'm sitting here behind my computer and Excel and their draft people are over there doing their things. They know more than I do. But personally, I am very happy to see this Trundle being taken away. Like I said, I do think it's just like this kind of champion really enables the Tinks show. And that's something you really want to shut down. Uh, and, and I think picking it up is a good way to do that. We might even see a reverse matchup here of the Trundle Lee Sin because Tinks loves the Lee Sin as well, much like Taxa does. So, yep, there it is. Lee Sin locking in. And yeah, we're rolling it back, flipping the sides. Oh, special drawing on the powers of his fellow UK okay. mid laner, Magi Felix. And he's going <laughs> to be channeling the Corky. I like this though because it gives them some kind of out. Late game, you know, Corky, the classic two spike mid laner, two item spike mid laner. Um, it gives them some late game prowess, which I think they were lacking in the last game. I, I prefer the drafts when XL give themselves a little bit extra to work with. Um, LDLC looking very, very, very good though. It's a, it's a tangy composition so far, mate, with the with the Lee Sin coming in the jungle for Tinks. And obviously, we're going to see Hades on a, a pick that he's performed so well on with uh -huh. the Ezreal. I was just going to say. The perfect pick in this game right now is Maokai. <laughs> like when you're looking at what you've got <laughs> up against, <laughs> looking up against LDRC's comp, it's like you're looking for ways to engage against like the Ezreal with the poke, and you're also looking for hard CC to shut otherwise slippery champions down, like the long like as like the Lee Sin. You don't have Orn that's taken off the table. What's another good kind of like tanky? Good and get what's the other one there? Oh, it's Maokai. That could be interesting. You don't see a lot of priority put on Maokai and the out Maokai is banned. So we're not going to be seeing him, unfortunately. There's going to have to be a different answer to that. But I do think we should be seeing, you know, maybe like a tankier version of the support in that bot lane. You know, we often see Tom Kench matched up with, uh, with Varus as well, even something like the Braum. And they might even go for the last pick in this top lane, which could get a counter over, well, most definitely would give a counter over to Sendo and XL. It makes sense that that would be the case because it is red side. You want to give yourself an advantage in a solo lane, I assume. And it is going to be the Braum for Kissing here. So giving himself uh, a more of a defensive option to help protect Deadly. A little bit of CC. More of a, a well-rounded comp coming out from XL in terms of what it can achieve at several stages in the game. Let's see what LDLC end up with here. They have a support and a top laner to go to right now. Uh, what do you think makes most sense, especially for, for bot lane with Yellow Star and Ezreal? Uh, I think, honestly, as far as LDLC are concerned, there's a lot of different ways you can you, you can go here. I'm not really... 
I don't really think that LDLC are putting under any specific pressure to, to draft something here. I'd like to see a bit more yeah. engage uh, coming out of out of support, but there's it's tough to find. Like I mean, Thresh is is probably one of the best engaged champions. You've got Bard was already taken away as well. Even Yumi has good engaged utilities and works really well with that Ezreal. Uh, so I'm curious to see. All right, they're going for Rakan as their as their source of engage instead. I do you know Rakan obviously. A very story champion for that and his ability to jump in and, and start team fights. You know, we're looking at the side of Excel. You've got Corky, you've got Varus. Those are both very poke heavy champions. You don't really have any uh, tanky members on the side of LDLC. So that should be like a lethality Varus, even more leaning into that that uh, poke composition. So from Excel, you either want the engage or you want a, a split pusher. Someone who can just not right. do anything interesting, you know, <laughs> just keep it chill. <laughs> Foxy, why not both? Why not both? You've got. Yeah. Nah, who is sure. an engage and a split pusher. He can do both. Um, and actually, you know, Tom Foxy, you, you called it correctly. You know, they wanted some more engage coming from the support role. They had a couple of options and they chose the Rakan. So, you know, you, you definitely you hit the nail on the head about what LDLC was seeking from that support role. And then Yellowstar is going to step up with that Rakan. Going to be the, you know, in combination, I imagine, with the, the gangplanks and looking for those big engages if they need them in, in sort of the mid game or skirmishes around the dragon and so on and so forth. But uh, these compositions have been locked in. What do you make of them? I actually... I really like both comps, and for LDLC, what what I like about the the GP Rakan picks, I think are really, really, really nice here, because you don't you're kind of lacking engage a, a little bit, like you don't have that massive kind of on horn to throw down like an Ash Arrow or something like mega just to start a fight. So when you have the GP ulti, sure it's not like a big engage tool, but it's it's something that you can then pair with something else to create a very powerful engage tool. And I think Rakan is like perfect for that you know like com combining uh the the rakan stuff with with an already slowed down team is just very very strong for the engage and i like the fact that you know for i, I think both these teams have very clear ways to win this game and i'm i'm i, I think i prefer these drafts to what we saw last game i think this could be a really interesting game Taxes uh, going aggressive into the blue side jungle here. I wonder if they're just looking to establish vision or actually trade blue for blue. But LDLC have responded and head over to the blue side jungle of BTXL. Ooh. Do BTXL understand or even know this is happening? Because, yeah, they do. They, they know. They know. <laughs> I think they might. There's a sneaky suspicion going on here. But I think they're going to take it. They do have Braum. The Braum level one is infamous for his power thanks to that passive. But obviously, Rakan is no slouch either. I, whoa, this is tense. This is tense. Goodness me, they are really waiting this out. Really, really. I, I guess they expected BTXL to rotate back towards their, their blue side. They are going to trade blue buff here. It looks like XL are going to go straight for the red buff. And I don't think Vateo really okay. saw that move happen. So this is a... I, I don't think I've really ever seen this before. It, it's not really vertical jungling. It's just like the junglers have swapped sides. <laughs> it's it's Tinks is that, Tinks right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and now they're going to head down towards this bot lane. Tinks is going to meet... LDLC there as well. LDLC maybe looking for the knockup. Has Yellowstar got the skill for it as Tinks is going to dive over the wall? They'll see he's got that uh, blue buff, and I think both teams will just exit this, understanding that they've traded buff for buff. Yeah, BTXL definitely would win that one. T uh, taxes on, on Trundle. Trundle is a far superior level 2 champion. He's also got the red buff, which helps him out. Plus, you've got Braum doing Braum things, so LDLC are just going to chill out uh, in that one there. Not going to make too much of a fuss. And honestly, just trading, trading buff for buff. Really interesting strategies. Maybe they, maybe they're uh, copying each other's homeworks a little bit there with uh, going for the same thing. But you know, not too much going on in the end. Just uh, two buffs traded. This is tense, though. Remember, because this is a best of three. So. If LDLC win, XL are uh, they get there's no second chance. They get thrown out of the tournament. This is goodbye for them. They are done. Um, this is the the the. I, I think this is the the furthest they've ever got in the tournament. And if they were to to lose here, they would they would better they would get, be no better than their previous best performance. Whereas LDLC are in the same boat. They are one game game away from winning and advancing further than they ever have before, living up to expectations that people have always had about this organization. I mean, they've consistently qualified. They've consistently built up um, a lot of. Uh, I guess hype around the team and now this time round they are seemingly living up to it. If they were to win here this would be the best performance for LDLC in any European Masters ever and it would be a huge win for them and the organization. Yeah and LDLC they're constantly putting out quality talent and this would just be you know another example of another LDLC roster that's able to succeed and we get the first potential gank of the game 
As Viteo and Tinks in the top lane. Ooh. Nothing going to happen though, Foxy. I, I, Viteo, Spooky again, plays. super early roam here. Yeah. It's, yeah, um, yeah. it's something that he did last game. He did that last game and tried to put pressure on Sendo. And it was just all about these early roams from Viteo. Combined with Tinks, this mid-jungle combo. Just looking to roam across the map and, and put pressure on lanes together. Um, but this time it looked like Tax was wise to it. And basically body blocked Sendo to allow him to get that good escape. Yes, protecting Sendo there in that top side, really important stuff. You don't want to be giving away too many free kills at any point in the game. You want to see when you play in League of Legends, but especially in like a as a Nar, it's not really a fun champion to play from behind. So if you can protect him and stop that from happening, that's all good stuff. Taxo is going to be taking his own crab in the bot side of the river here instead. And as we're taking a look at like the lane positionings here and just like the lanes in general, mid lane is going to be very hard to gank. Probably so is top lane as well. So I'm really thinking about like bot lane as being the lane to go to. And, you know, Tax is already focusing his efforts a little bit down here. Just seeing just uh, being aggressive to allow Deadly to get a couple more hits on that turret. Sendo has to be so careful as Tinks makes his way in. Sendo does have his flash available. He's baiting Tinks to follow up on that sonic wave, and unfortunately, Bando just not in a good position for that. Tinks is uh, going to continue though. Sendo's pretty healthy, Ooh. but Teo making his way up also, and there's no one here to respond for BTXL. He's almost mega. There are two TPs on XL. Do they use them? Oh, oh first blood so comes close. out for Teo. The, the teleport's just not going to be good enough for special. It just slightly mismanaged there for uh, for Sendo, but it's given BTXL the chance to go down and, and take that dragon. And also, I mean. I mean you are going to get all that farm onto special now. He did teleport up for some farm, true. essentially. Yep, that's true. So you're not going to lose all those minions. That is a, a benefit. As you say, so is the dragon. Being able to take that one away when you have the trundle on your team, it's kind of a crime not to be able to secure these early dragons. That was a very close play in the top side, though. Sendo must have been on, like, 95 rage or something like that. A little bit more. One more auto attack would have enabled him to flip out and turn into the Meganar. And with that Godzilla form be able to get a little bit of extra health and survive that dive with the TP coming in. So small early advantages picked up by LDLC. This time Tinks being a more lane focused jungler as they dive onto Deadly. The Ignite already there. Has he got flash available? He does. Really holding on to it though. Ooh. That might have been a mistake as Bando picks up the kill with his ultimate. And again, LDLC just turning the knife. A huge amount of minion waves uh, lost to this bot lane tier one as well. And Tinks isn't done yet. He wants the head of Kasing too. And he's forced to flash. Nice knock up, almost hitting. And uh, Kasing dives out behind his tier two. Look at Mateo. He ain't done. He fancies this too. He fancies it too, mate, and he does wow. get it. Vateo picks up a kill. Been thoroughly impressed with this mid laner from LDLC. Really doesn't feel like Special has been able to answer this roaming pressure of the LeBlanc. Yeah, his answer is having a bit more CS, but I can, you know, I think everyone watching this right now can tell you which one they'd rather have. So this one all starts off, you know, a pretty good engage by Yellow Star, doing Yellow Star things on the Rakan and having the follow up from Tinks. And exactly as you called it, wow, what what a, what a hold on to that flash by Deadly. I had it up the whole time. I really think you've got to give a little bit more respect there. Same for Kasing, who stays around a little bit longer too. And Vatera has been everywhere. He's he's had two roams top. This is now a roam on bot side. Three roams this far early on into the game. I mean, you're definitely seeing why they first picked up the Bronx for Vatera. And it, again, it's a change of play style. This isn't about a Tinks being in the enemy jungle, forcing Taxa into awful positions or, or, or preventing Taxa from being in his lanes. This time, it's it's lots of ganks, ganks everywhere. Um, t tower dives, repeat yeah. ganks. Um, heading through lane ganks, it's it's been all lane focused pressure from LDLC this time round, and 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 XL, they, they seemingly don't know how to deal with this. They they don't have an answer. Special isn't roaming. I, I guess maybe it's reflected in in the small CS lead that he's opened up. Maybe reflected in the fact that it's a Corky versus the LeBlanc early game. You maybe expect that, but Vateo has done his job on this on this LeBlanc really well. Uh, absolutely, you know, big props to the way that LDLC have played this game so far, and it's. It's crazy to me that Tinks is able to play the reverse of these matchups and still be so successful as Yellow Star is going to get a little bit caught here, but just hopping away to safety. Not too much to talk about there with Taxa putting a little bit of pressure on, but honestly, you know, I guess it really is just another just another way to, to hype up Tinks of how good he is with the fact that he's <laughs> able to just make both these matchups look incredibly one-sided. 
And with Bando finding the edge in a 1v1 versus Sendo in the top lane, there's no pressure top side of the map. No rotation yeah. from the bot lane needed for LDLC. It is a free Rift Herald for Tinks here. Although I say that, Tax is waiting. Teleport coming through. Tinks is going to back off from this as Sendo is looking for the engage on to Bando and now Special and Tax are working their way through. Immediately the pack is dropped. Tinks over the wall and there goes Special. They're getting pressure onto Tinks who does go down. Sendo picking up the kill just when XL needed a response. They found it. And over Teo, Special now caught on the wrong side. Forced to flash over the wall. There is the fruit. Can he keep himself alive as ah. Bando flashes in the cheeky little Q picks up the kill and now Sendo and Tax are forced to back away. Oh man, that was it was such a good start for XL. They got the pick onto onto Tinks right outside the Herald. They could have made that happen, but again, for time, mate, he's just he does not want to be playing mid lane, does he? He really is just leaving 24-7, and that's something you've got to respect constantly. And again, puts in the pressure there, gets pretty much gets that kill for himself there on special. He's he's, he's off again! He, this he, man he, has he, no he, home. Who is the jungler? Is it Viteo or is it Tinks? Because Viteo is now on the top side of the map. Two level advantage for Bando and Viteo jumps over, Just... picks up the kill. Oh my word, this man is on fire in this game. Ima imagine being Taxa and, and being the third best jungler in this game. Like, <laughs> that's just... What, 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 what has happened to Viteo here? I was honestly pretty critical of what... Of what Viteo was able to do in, in in the group stage of EU Masters, he was coming into this tournament, 17 year old, fresh faced, really impressive in the LFL, but inexperienced. And I think the inexperience was something that was kind of showing a little bit uh, in in the beginning parts of this tournament. But even just look at this, he's con he's been roaming around constantly this game. He gets his pick on a special, and even though it is Bando who picks up the kill, this is basically another Viteo play. You know, coming coming into this I into this quarterfinal here. You know, Viteo had less gold than Tinks. Yes, that is a stat. That, that's a very impressive Tinks stat, but still. He, his damage share was pretty low from mid laner as well. And it's just like, he didn't have, he had the lowest kill participation on his team. What on earth has changed between group stage and quarters? Viteo is an absolute beast in this game. Yeah, I think the stat that you mentioned that's most interesting is the lowest kill participation. He wasn't making yeah. roams like this. He wasn't looking to be as impactful on the map. And now he is. Taxa trying to get onto Yellow Star, but it is a, a Rakan. He'll be able to dive away pretty nicely as Kasing takes the awkward way round, but has the Unbreakable to keep him safe. But uh, Viteo and Tinks, the two-man ganking army, are they are back to force the pressure down. That's a nice ultimate from Yellow Star. The kick comes through, but actually Deadly survives. And now Special, he's got fish in a barrel. He just needs to land the shots. Unfortunately, Viteo baits them out with the clone and he will not be able to convert. But uh, a good defense there by BTXL. They need more of those. But, I mean, oh, look man. at the bleeding happening on the top side of the map here. Bando absolutely running away with it. Yeah, I, I said, you know, the problem with, with Nar is like playing Nar from behind is, is not fun. This is a two level discrepancy here as well. 30 CS difference. 202 to 120. It's. Sendo is not having a good time, but this is the the first good play that XL have been able to execute today, really, especially in this game. They are going to pick up their first kill, or sorry, not their first kill, but you know, their, their first kind of proactive play here, make this one happen. Even though it starts with LDLC making the roam, they're just not quite able to, to make it happen and a good response by the British. A good flash from Deadly this time around. We did kind of criticize the flashes that he had in previous engages, but he did flash out of the flash kick from Tinks, which mm -hmm. did keep himself alive. Going to drop the Rift Held right in the bot. I don't really think XL are going to be able to stop the charge coming through here, which should allow LDLC to convert into the first turret. I do believe this should get it. Yeah, yeah it that's going to pick up the first tower there and really open up uh, some potential lane swaps if they fancy that kind of just nullify what was happening in that 2v2 bot side because that was something that was working for XL. XL were having some fun down there which now should be a little bit of a change. Just so, talking about the gold there that we were able to, to flip to before, there wasn't too much to really note apart from that top lane. There's like a 2,000 gold difference between GP and Nah. And GP is obviously banking up extra gold as well with his passive. He's going to get his... Uh, his, his, his different kind of cannon forms coming available, you can see it there, 5.3k to 3.4k, that, you know, you're 30 minutes into the game, uh, it, it's painful, you know, and big props to Bando for being able to step up and really just be exceptionally impressive in both the tiebreakers and in this series. Yeah, I really feel like 
th this game has been going on longer than 13 minutes with the amount of action that we've been seeing it really has felt quite hectic and uh, you know uh, things have been happening almost every stage of the game but we are you know i need to remind you we are only 13 minutes in let's take a look at the gold differential right now it's about 3,000 um in favor of ldlc a lot of that like you said and correctly mentioned coming in through bando who as we previously said in the, the game last he had been criticized <laughs> for some of his solo lane performances um, he actually had one of the lowest KDAs of any top laners, one of the lowest kill participations, but you actually mentioned that one, he had one of the highest damage shares for his team. Um, this time round, 202, massive CS advantage, finding um, plates early on, basically 1v1, um, and I think has had a very stellar series versus XL so far. I'm very impressed with with Sendo, uh, sorry, with uh, Bando, and I think he's yeah. massively improved since the group stages, much like Viteo. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I, I feel like we, we spent most of the groups just saying, "Wow, Tinks, big backpack." This time round, <laughs> the the small the small seeds in the backpack they've blossomed into fully functioning Ivans, and they're walking around themselves. So it's it's that they this are. is a really really <laughs> this is a very mature LDLC roster, and I think uh, a, a new form as they've taken on in this quarterfinals. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't put it better myself. Like this wasn't a team that we were looking at and saying, "Look at the power of the solo laners here for LDLC." But now, honestly, I think you can say that. That's been something that they've really impressed with. Uh, unfortunately, they're a bit of a whiff in the mid lane, not going to be able to catch Viteo as more structures are falling here. And I just, I do just want to give a cheeky thank you and a bit of an apology to the observers there. We had to swap to the gold on three different occasions within a one minute span because we are flip flopping around what we are talking <laughs> about. So I appreciate that. Thank you for, for bearing with us. Uh, but either way, yes, there is some gold differences here. And uh, here's the package. Oh, did he just drop? Did he just lose the package? Like as he went in there, or am I blind and he didn't have package at all? I'm not. I I, but, but, I honestly could not tell you because it did kind of look like he had package, but maybe it was just yeah. the speed, the yeah. speed from coming from base. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was that. Maybe maybe it was that. I yeah. Oof. I mean, that would be terribly unlucky if it was actually the package that timed out the second he uses Valkyrie. But yeah, it could have just been something that I'm being a bit of a dingus about. So that's all good. We'll ignore that one. Four thousand gold each at fifteen minutes. Pretty hefty, scoundrel mate. Yeah, absolutely. And the next Rift Herald is sporting sometime soon. One dragon apiece, so XL are going to delay that dragon soul a bit more. But it definitely feels like LDLC are in the driving seat at this point in time. It feels like they are the ones that have to make the mistake for XL to capitalize. Now, XL do have, and we talked about it from the draft, they have more options as the game progresses compared to last time. They have a Corky who scales well. Um, Deadly is going to be relevant with the Lethality Varus because there are very few targets that want to soak that kind of damage, no matter how long the game goes on here. Um, and Obviously, Sendo is always going to have a useful ultimate in a teamfight situation at any stage in the game and can split push if get if he gets to a certain point in the game. So XL have options that they can utilize this time round rather than just being dead in the water. So I, I don't want to count my chickens before they've hatched. There is still a, there's still an opportunity for XL to do well here. But honestly, it really does feel like this is LDLC's game to lose. And it has felt like LDLC, LDLC's series to lose, um, to be completely honest with you. Yeah, any time you're 50 minutes into a game with a 5k gold lead, you are pretty well favoured to take that one home. Uh, honestly, for me, when I'm looking at the different you know, champions and the matchups and the items and stuff like that, the only one I'm, I'm really worried about at this point in the game is Sendo. I think everyone else at this point, you know, the Corky's fairly well matched up into that LeBlanc. You've got the Varus that's decently matching up as well. Like, it's kind of somewhat of a stalemate between the rest of the squad. It's really just his top difference right now as they're playing in the bot lane that's really like a big problem you know like this this cannot be happening if there's kill pressure on gp onto not like this is this is awful for for excel here I mean, yeah, this is grim, and, and Sendo's really struggling to actually stop that split push happening. They're actually committing lots of members over to Bando yeah. on this uh, bottom side of the map. There's the ultimate coming out from Deadly. I think Bando might just be dead. The shutdown does come through, uh, but Rift Herald dropped to the mid. How many turrets are XL going to lose here? They could actually lose both Tier 1 and Tier 2 if they're not careful. Something that you have to keep into consideration here as well is uh, the... Oh, be careful. Nice. Good flash there from Special. Is he going to go down anyway, though? It looks like he's just ticking. He's gone. He's dead. He's, he's put he's, in the dirt. He's done. Yeah. Uh, other synonyms for being dead. It's, it's <laughs> that, that is what Special is right there. Unfortunately, the flash didn't save him. Uh, Viteo managed to find that combo again. And I've got to say, I don't want I, I to call out Special too much, but... This is a really, really strong LeBlanc performance, and, and Special yep. had the opportunity in the previous game to kind of do a similar kind of roaming strategy. Yes, okay, he was against Zoe. Bit, bit harder to push out a Zoe than it is a Corky maybe in the early game, but 
yes, this is a good performance from Mateo on that uh, on that uh, LeBlanc. And what really, really sucks about the death that just occurred there for special is like they had the, the man advantage for a dragon play if they wanted to go for it, as dragon was like 20 seconds uh, from spawning when GP died. But with that play in mid, you know, no longer can you go for this dragon. Instead, this is going to be another one in the pocket of LDLC, which is, you know, fairly significant. And, and obviously, as this game goes on and as teams are able to acquire more dragons, especially if LDLC keep this, keep this pace up, you know, then that's this this one dragon here can make a big difference. I want to reiterate what this series means. I think it's quite clear that the winner goes to the semi-finals. Uh, that's kind of what a quarterfinals does. But I want to reiterate what it means for LDLC and, and, and XL. Neither team has made it this far. Neither team has made it to the top four in this competition before. Um, LDLC have constantly been touted as potential winners. And XL, I think, um, they, I, I guess they've played second fiddle to Fnatic quite a lot in the UK. So, you know, for the, their ability to go on further, they've not lost to them, especially some of the players like Kasing, who is there to prove himself from having dropped out the LEC in the last year. Special, who is a new uh, up and coming mid laner that's constantly been talked about. I mean, this is the best opportunity for them to prove themselves. Losing here is actually a devastating blow for either organization, and winning sets a new record for yourself. In the in the EU Masters, so it is a huge deal this this quarterfinal for both of the teams. Yeah, no one wants to to lose ever, but there are definitely some some organisations with different expectations that you know if you were to reach the quarterfinals of EU Masters, then you can if you get knocked out, you can say, well, you know, we did pretty good. We didn't think we, were, we would get this far, and, and you know, good job, squad. Neither of these two teams are one of those orgs. Like this is not this is there's no consolation prize for these guys if they don't make it out of the quarters and oh my goodness there's more pressure put on the special here he's done so again it's, this is just sad I, i'm gonna be honest with you as a uk fan i i can't hide my tears streaming down my face <laughs> as ltlc start the baron xl have rolled over and uh have essentially said take 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 the baron take the game take the, the quarterfinal <laughs> Feel free, feel free to advance. Yes, sir. Take, don't worry about it. I, I, hey. I'm, I am sad as a UK LC fan. <laughs> I, I, I do think that obviously XL have, have avenues that could get them back in, but it's just not looking likely right now. It really feels like LDLC have had the number of XL from the very get-go, even from the very draft in this series. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, even with certain adaptations in the drafts that gave XL a better chance, they've still looked like exactly like that, deadly. You know, just perfectly... Perfectly explained there. The little uh, little legend with tears streaming down his eyes is pretty much how this one's gone for the British squad. Now you do have Varus with uh, you know as he gets more items, his his poke's going to land and, and really stick a lot harder, especially against the squishy comp of LDLC. You've got Corky who's looking to get like his kind of late game <laughs> late game scaling guy on as well. So yeah, there are still ways for them to win. Stranger things have happened, but. Quite rightly, as you say, LDLC absolutely smashing this game. They smashed the previous game and are on a, a good pace to take the whole four final. Yeah, they got 7k gold advantage at 21 minutes. Um, item spikes left, right, and center. Nearly the uh, Trinity Force finished up for uh, Hades, which gives him that two item spike. We've got a huge spike for Bando now, having finished his Essence Revo alongside that Infinity Edge 2. And honestly, Sendo has just looked completely out of it. They're going to go in onto Bando. He has kind of been the target for XL when they've found some kind of opportunity to go in. But at what cost, my friends? At what cost? The rest of LDLC are very happy to continue to shove. Yeah, well, I was going to say, like, the late you get into the game, oh, they're looking for the engage, but I don't think they're going to be able to find it. LDLC are very good at just running away from this one. Very slippery, and lacking that hard, reliable CC that XL really need uh, to shut down the people like Ez, like Pekan, like LeBlanc, <laughs> like Lee Sin. Basically everyone that isn't named Gangplank uh, is really hard to lock down, and, you know, XL just don't have, don't have the best answer for that. Mate, it was the 500 IQ 4D Maokai ban. It wasn't even it that was, 500 IQ. It really it was, actually, was. It was. It was just a. It was just a good ban. But yeah, the Maokai ban coming in big for uh, for LDLC because now there is very limited options for them in terms of point and click. 
Tinks and Vertia, uh, uh, Verteo just pushing in. And again, vision control has been sparse for XL. They've, they've found it very difficult to actually yeah. get control of their own jungle. And I really feel like it would be a miracle if they, if they found a fight that actually went in their favor, especially with the Baron now knocking down these inhibitors. Sendo just diving onto Bando. Bando does not yeah. give two flying craps about that. He's just happy to say, fine, jump at me, mate. I've got all these barrels. They're great. They explode. It's they do pronounced damage. crepes, actually, as the French team. <laughs> But, <laughs> sorry, crepes. sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, no I, I, do you know what, mate? I, if you ever have one learners like that, I will give you the floor because uh, they are, they're kind of what, what makes you foxy, you know? Thank you. Well, speaking of floors, LDRC are absolutely wiping it with XL right now, and they're really just stuck in their base, all three of their lanes being pushed in with this Baron. And as you say, you know, looking for that really good fight, it's kind of hard to do when you're stuck in your base because when you're looking for a good engage you kind of have to catch someone by surprise and I don't think there's much surprise for LDLC being like oh my goodness there's five people at the enemy nexus holy crap who, crap, who could have thought that w would happen you know it's just not gonna happen you know so instead what I think XO will have to rely on is a bit of cheeky poke but it's just thing is when you're this far behind uh, with itemization it's so tough to do that you know and LDSC are playing it really smart they're not over committing to anything they're not giving Excel an inch yeah and you can see special just they, they really can't put push much further I mean obviously Sendo is wildly up on the top side of the map but I think it's because Excel are aware of where uh, the majority of the LDLC roster are with that dragon having just been taken but you know this is essentially trying to gather what little gold you can get on the map right now that's that's all XL can do other than that they are sitting in their base waiting for LDLC to make a move and hoping that they can actually find a team fight that goes in their favor special has got the package but it would have to be uh, you know an unbelievable package to actually get uh, to get something out of it and 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 Sendo will take that top lane tower but again it, it's it's scraps at the end of the day and special getting yeah. dived on by Viteo can use the package defensively in the meantime LDLC they Man. push into that mid lane inhibitor yeah LDLC they're just it is so tough to play versus this team like they they've been flawless honestly for both of these games and XL are really, really in trouble. They've, they've just not really been able to have any answers for what LDLC have thrown at them. Both these teams came into this matchup on four game win streaks to get here. You know, and I was thinking this would be a really hype, really like back and forth. Maybe I'm a bit biased because I'm UK, but still, I was expecting that this would be quite a close series, well contested. But LDLC have completely shattered those expectations, at least for me. And they've, they've proven that this could be a team that you know doesn't, doesn't just make it to quarters, but absolutely a, a team of this caliber that's performing this well against you know XL, who's not this is not like a like a bad team by any means. We could very well be seeing LDLC in the final here, and I'm not I'm not shy to, to claim that right now. Well, they'd be going on to face uh, Ago Rogue, I believe. Uh, they're on the same side of the brackets. They, if they were to win, they would be facing up against the team that dismantled Maus with two of our previous winners. They definitely have a tough road ahead of them in the rest of the European Masses. But they've got to get there first. I mean, I know they've got a 7.5k gold lead to work with, but they still have to close it out and special, making that same mistake in the side lane. Tinks will capitalize. The knockup comes through onto Kasing. This is just easy work for the French squad. Two kills and now pushing up the top lane. Easy as you like. Special playing a champion that should be pretty hard to catch out. Consistently being caught really just kind of tells the story of this game. LDLC absolutely have been the better team by a wide, mar wide margin today. And they're pushing in this top inhibitor. And I think, you know, the end of the game might not be too far in sight. Yeah, they're going to take it easy. They're going to push through the bot side of the map as well. Just trying to paint by numbers on the rift right here, and they're going to push into that bot lane in inhibitor turret. Yeah, this will not be long for the world. This is now all towers, all inhibitors down outside of the Nexus towers, and oh, another engage! Oh, Deadly goes down, but Teo converts once more. The man has been doing that time and time again. XL, they valiantly defend, but it's just too much for LDLC as they push towards the Nexus turret. Special gets knocked up and kicked once more, and it really feels like this is it for LDLC. No longer are they cursed by the European masters. They free themselves of the shackles of the quarterfinals, and they will find themselves solidly in the semis. Congratulations, L Congratulations to the LFL and LDLC. You are in the semi-finals of the European Masters. And you know what? 
I'm an Englishman, but I gotta say, 100, 1 million percent deserve that. The LFL, this is the number two seed out of the LFL. This is obviously, you know, Britain's number two as well. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we talked about XL story for a while with like the whole, how they were, hadn't lost a game and they got reverse swept in the finals. But still, like, for LDLC to put on this display today really surprised me, but also in a, in a positive way as well, because I think. All of E-Masters 2020 so far has been very close and a lot of it has been, there's no there's no real heavy favourites. There have been surprises so far with like uh, Giants and Shark Revolution going out in the in the group stage. Two of arguably our best teams, number one seeds coming out of two of the strongest regions. You know, who is the who is the favourite when that happens? Some would say Maus, they've been knocked out here. And now LDLC coming into this, this matchup and the way they performed... Um, yo, they are favourites for me for this entire tourney. They, they look incredible. LDLC, again, like I said, finally living up to the expectations set for an organisation who has been in this position, you know, never, never been in this position before, but in this position in the European Masters where they've had the, the hype around them. I am going to leave you for a moment, Foxy, because I am joined by LDLC Tinks now, who is going to talk to me about this series and about the European Masters in general. Um, Tinks, can you hear me? I am just going to quickly check because I have not got Tinks on my earphone. So I'm just going to double check again. Tinks, could you just reply if you could hear me? So I can hear you at least, but... I am not currently getting Tinks. Th oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. I can hear him okay, now. Thank sure, you. Sure, sure. Uh, now I've got you now, Tinks. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that's all good. Yeah. Um, Tinks, first of all, congratulations, mate. You've made LDLC history you. and you're in the <laughs> semi-finals of the European Masters. How, how are you guys feeling? I mean, I think everyone's really happy. I think... Like these two games, we, you, how, we played yeah. without much uh, fear, you know? Like, I think everyone just played to their limits and no one was really scared to play the game. So it just felt really, really easy, kind of like a scrim where we just went in and did our thing. Uh, and actually, for you specifically, Tinks, um, I'm just just aware there's a little bit of a delay between me and Tinks right now. So if I'm, I'm silent sure. for a long time, it's because I'm just waiting for Tinks to finish his answer. Um, Tinks, you in that first game, you I, I kind of said it on cast, you kind of reminded me of old Diamond Prox and 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 like the way that you play, <laughs> you're very aggressive, you're in the enemy jungle. Um and I don't know another jungler in the European Masters that has done that. And I feel like you're very unique in the way that you approach the game. When when you are making those kind of plays in your head, when you are stepping over the threshold as the enemy jungler, what are you thinking about? Are you tracking their pathing? Are you just knowing that you've got a matchup advantage or you have the support of your laners? Because you that trundle game, you were in Tax's jungle the entire time, putting on pressure. What was going through your head in, in that in that sort of uh, early gameplay? Uh, I definitely don't think I'm the only one who has the capability of doing something like this. Uh, I just think a lot of people are kind of scared to test the limits of their matchups when it's a competitive game. Uh, if you understand the Lysin Trondle matchup, you'll know that Trondle actually has an advantage if, if Lysin face checks him and he can win fights fairly easily in early games. So, like for sure, in scrims, people will will look to test these things harder. But I think I'm just one of the only ones who are not scared to actually do this in a competitive game, right? So, I I think every time I am going for something, either I have an ad advantage in terms of items or an advantage in terms of my champion just being stronger at these kind of points. So, I'm never going into something just completely blind. I I always have something that I feel like I have an edge where I can go for something. It has to be priority items or champions, something like this, and I can go for a fight. Of course, and I think obviously it speaks testament to how much you know about those particular matchups. Uh, something that um, I think really impressed us this game as well was the way that um, Bando and Viteo stepped up as well. They, they had had some shakier mm -hmm. performances, and I'm sure they'll be the first to admit that some of their games weren't perfect. But Bando and Viteo in this series, I feel especially Viteo absolutely smurfing it on that LeBlanc. Um, yeah. What has it been like for them? And you know, coming into the European Masters, what have they worked on uh, over the last few weeks? Has it been like an evolution? Have you guys learned? and grown throughout this tournament? I mean, V2 is obviously a rookie, right? He's only played one split in the LFL. So for him coming in, he was probably a bit nervous in the first couple of games, which I can understand quite well. I think these games, he really like exceeded my expectation as well, because he just came in and played with absolutely no fear. And that's kind of just the perfect scenario for any player, right? Uh, so uh, huge props to both of them. Like, I think the most important things in these kind of games, just play with no fear and you can win. 
play with no fear. You guys absolutely did in in this game. It was incredible to watch. And you'll be going on to face uh, Ago Rogue, I believe, in the semi-finals. Mm -hmm. What are your What are your thoughts on on that matchup? You don't need to give away anything. There's no strats or anything. But what are your thoughts going into that matchup? Um, do you think that you have an edge? Do you think it's going to be very close? I think it's a team that we actually scrimmed quite a lot, and generally, I would say they had the advantage in scrim, but. In stage game, we have won against them 2-1. And I think we're playing generally better in stage games than we are in scrims. So I feel like it's a really even matchup that can go both ways. It just depends on who has the day, right? Uh, so I can't really for sure say that we're going to beat them. But for, for sure, it's going to be a good match, right? Like, it's going to be a close match. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I actually got one cheeky last question. Um, Foxdrop asked me to ask you this. Do you still watch <laughs> Foxdrop's videos? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been a while. I have seen him. I, I still subscribe to him, so for sure I I see him his video in my feed a few times. So. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he'll be really happy to hear that because he did tell me that he was very proud that uh, Tinks used to watch his videos back in the day. So uh, I'm sure he's really happy to see you uh, do really well. In fact, yeah, in fact yeah. I think he's actually here. He might be. He might even be able to talk to you right now. One second. Okay. We love you, Tinks. Good job, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, like Trump. I mean, sadly, there's no offline event this time, so we can't party after. But <laughs> we'll probably meet at some point in the future, no? <laughs> mm. Good stuff. <laughs> Uh, for joining me and, uh, and and talking to me about that uh, really incredible series that you had versus XL. Thank you. All right, Foxy, I've got you back, mate. Uh, <laughs> I got the question in for you. I know you wanted it. Uh, <laughs> nice, to, uh, <laughs> nice to see Tinks there. Um, okay, so... Obviously, we've just seen two very, very... I mean, it was quick. There was two very quick quarterfinals there. We've now got um, the bracket set up for our remaining quarterfinals and semifinals. Um, what are you thinking about, A, the, the quarterfinals that we've got coming up tomorrow, Movistar Riders versus Fnatic Rising, uh, Gamers Origin versus Kick Neo Surf, and then obviously I want, I want to get your quick opinion on that Ego Rogue LDLC matchup. Yeah, I, I think... So Movistar and Fnatic can, it should be like a really, really close series. I kind of thought that about this one, but honestly, I think recent form kind of favours Fnatic, perhaps. So maybe Fnatic have made top four of the past few E-Masters, so there's a good chance they can do that again. Kick Neo Surf versus Gamers Origin. Uh, I would say... Like, the thing, the thing with Gamers Origin is, like, I think they're really good, and I think they should take it, but Kick have always uh, kind of impressed me and, and, and exceeded their expectations so I'm too scared to even call anything for that for that matchup as well and yeah I think Tink said it best for this for this semi here too I mean uh, my eyes are always going to be on LDLC right now I Rogue really did dismantle Mouse as well in this in this other quarterfinals they're looking really good uh, but you know just just the fact that everyone stepped up on LDLC I think as long as they keep playing with no fear as Tink said then uh, yeah I think they have a good chance in semis too yeah, he's got a he's got a very very um, I think a mature and positive mentality about the way they approach the game. And like you said, sometimes there there is no reason to hold yourself back in certain matchups. And Tink seems to know them as well as his team. You know, playing with no fear as well, like he said about Vateo. Um, Foxy, I feel like this this day's been too short. I really wanted to spend some more time with you, but that's the, that's the end of the, the the first day of quarterfinals. We are done. Uh, two teams done and dusted, landing themselves in those semifinals. It has been a pleasure as always, and I hope you guys have all enjoyed uh, the first two quarterfinals of our bracket. Tomorrow, we're back at the same time, same place, where we will dive into our second two quarterfinals. Um, so I guess we will see you tomorrow.